Hey everybody, this is Dean and welcome to Photo Blue. Today I thought I'd do a quick review on uh, DXO Photo Lab version 6, which just came out this week. Uh, I've used previous versions of this program before. The nice thing about it is you can use it as a standalone photo editor or you can incorporate it into your workflow with other photo editors and uh, photo management software. Uh, it kind of combines both uh, things that Lightroom does and Photoshop does. Lightroom is primarily what's called a DAM, uh, a digital asset management software where you can kind of index and search through and rate your photos. Uh, and Photoshop is m primarily a photo editor where you uh, do uh, kind of heavy photo editing, although Lightroom has some editing capabilities in it too, and they've added, they add more over time. So uh, there's kind of a blur there between uh, the two programs, uh, but basically m most photo editing programs either kind of manage your photos or edit them or do a combination of the two. And this one does the combination of the two. Uh, so you can actually use Lightroom to manage all of your photo collection and then bring up uh, Photo Lab and use it as your raw photo editor. And then once you edit the raw photo in there, you can bring it into Photoshop for your final touches if you want to, and depending on what you really need to do with your photo editor. Uh, but you can certainly use Photo Lab 6 to manage your photos, edit your photos, and put out a final photo as well. So it, it works standalone fine, and it works with other photos or other photo editors as well. Uh, there are a few things that it doesn't do, which I'll go over, and there are a few new features on it that I'll go over as as, as we go through this. Um, so let's start with the kind of the uh, a kind of the quick look at um, photo management here. You can actually it has a nice slide down here, or nice groups of slides that you can um, switch through and switch between photos if you want and it also has a, a rating system on it where you can actually uh, rate it by stars like you would in uh, Lightroom. Uh, you can also um, add color labels now. This is a new functionality to it so if we if we wanted to color code certain things, let's color code this red for example, we can color code them which is a function that Lightroom uh, also has. Uh, you can also add metadata to this, and it and it brings in various metadata. Uh, if you have GPS coordinates already on your uh, uh, files, it will bring that in. Uh, if you have, uh, it will also you know bring in data such as you know the uh, shutter speed and the aperture and all that. So it. it uh, does a pretty good job at that, and apparently in the newer, um, in the newer version of this, in, in version six, which we're looking at right here, they've actually uh, one of the things they did was they've uh, added more metadata. They've also improved it so you can kind of uh, sort things into projects, uh, which are kind of like I guess um, uh, like you can group photos uh, so that. You can have a collection. It's, I guess it's called a collection in Lightroom, but in here you can have a project, and you can have sub projects within the project. So they've they've so they've worked with that as well. So um, they've improved the capability of it in this version uh, for organizing your photos. So so th that's kind of the first part of it. And so then if we look over at the editor which is under customize, you have to remember this is a raw photo editor. And so uh, Photoshop is not really a raw photo editor. In order to get a raw photo into Photoshop, you either have to use Lightroom, which is a raw photo editor, or, or you have to use Camera Raw, which is another Adobe uh, application, uh, which also 
we'll do some raw edits and bring it into Photoshop. Or you can use another raw editor such as Photolab. So you could actually use Photolab as a raw editor and bring it into Photoshop for certain things. Uh, so because of that, it actually saves the, it's non-destructive editing. And so it saves the information in a database like uh, Lightroom does, but it will also save in what's called a sidecar. Uh, if you wanted to. A sidecar file is uh, a file with information on the edits. So you need to have the sidecar file and the original raw file to um, view your changes or you can or if you're using uh, uh, DX Photo it has a database which also saves those changes as well. So the sidecar is optional but it's like a nice backup and it's also if you need to share the photo with somebody else who wants to edit it you can give them both files and then they will have your edits already on it. Uh, it's a little confusing sometimes editing with raw photo editors because uh, what they do is because they're non-destructive they save the data on the changes always in a different place like a database or a sidecar file and so if you move them if you open them in another raw editor you start back at the beginning unless you have a sidecar file that the second raw editor um, can read so you always want to kind of do your raw editing first and then move it into a more standardized uh, format for final edits or any specialized edits in another editor uh, so now that to move this out you have a way uh, you can actually export the file to a disk or to another file or export it back to Lightroom and then from there go to Photoshop or export it directly to Photoshop or another application so you can do your edits in here and move it between Lightroom and Photoshop if you're using those or a different photo editor uh, you can actually do pretty much anything most people would want to do on this editor. The one thing it doesn't really have is uh, layers. Uh, so so uh, it actually has something equivalent to adjustment layers, which are just layers for adjustments. But if you want to combine photos like in a montage uh, or, or something, this program isn't really designed to do that. But most people in, in, in most photography tends to be tends not to use uh, montages uh, a lot. So if you're not going to do something like that, um, uh, regular layers may not be as useful to you or as necessary. Uh, although there are times when you actually do a photo montage to do certain effects. So it is useful to have layers for other things. Uh, so that's one thing that's not on here. And if you need heavy use of layer and masking, this may not be the program for you, but if you just need layers to apply uh, uh, effects or to um, uh, apply adjustments, then this has a way to do that, uh, which I'll show you in a second here. Uh, so let's just go through uh, the tabs here. The first tab here is it has to do with exposure and such. And the nice thing about Photolab is it actually, um, a lot of photo editing software only has adjustments for highlights and shadows, or sliders for highlights and shadows. It actually has sliders for midtones uh, in uh, in uh, Photolab, which is which is which is a nice thing. So, so for example, I can adjust the highlights here and and bring it down, you know, to make sure we have the highlights in the clouds. But I can also adjust the midtones separately from the shadows. So it has an extra range in there. And if you if you know anything about um, audio sound editing or uh, equalizers with audio, um, they have something called an equalizer, which allows you to adjust the frequencies of sound in the more different bands that you can adjust the more you can fine-tune it so this is a similar thing to that uh, so if we move over to the next tab which is color this is one of the nicer features in this and in, 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 in the way it handles 
uh, this feature is uh, fairly unique uh, uh, um, as compared to other photo editors. There is um, something called HSL, which is Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And most photo editors have something equivalent to this. But the nice thing about this particular uh, um, control is we can select the dropper here and we can pick a color and it will automatically give us the the range and so we can actually take this top slider and move it over and totally change the color or just you know subtly change it so we we have a a great range that we can adjust that with but the other nice thing about this is we can also pull back on what levels it affects quite a bit actually so you, you see some of, of it we're turning back to green and some of it's going towards a red pink uh, or we can move everything kind of to the red all the greens to red like that so that's a that's a very uh, nice control you have a lot of control over this particular HSL control as well So the uh, another thing that it has, and this is a new feature as well, we have um, denoising in here, and and we have like four different qualities: high quality prime, deep prime, and deep prime XD, which I believe is the newest thing they've put in here. And uh, if you're interested in seeing a demo on this, there's not really enough time in this video to go over a good demo of of the denoising but if you're interested leave a comment below the video uh, and I'll make a, a video on 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 the uh, deep prime features in here but basically uh, the deep prime XT is is really good at, at removing noise and still keeping things uh, sharp a lot of times when you remove remove noise it, it's going to start to blur the picture somewhat because of the way they denoise it uh, but uh, this is one of the highest quality, I think, denoisers uh, among photo editors. Um, so it, it's real high quality. So if you do a lot of photography at night or photography where you, you're in situations where you have to have a high ISO and there's a lot of noise, this is a good way to remove it. Uh, so we go over to the next tab real quick. The next tab has different controls for perspective, so, so you can fix you know distortions uh, uh, in your uh, photo uh, we'll go to the next tab real quick the next tab is local adjustments and local adjustments is pretty cool because if we accept go to local adjustments we can actually um, we can actually uh, select an area And we can uh, we can change any number of things. Uh, I'll just we've got you know the brightness, we've got color, and uh, we've got detail here. So let's go with the color so we can see what's going on here. So I can change this this area right here, and so we can mask it. So this is this is one of the masking tools that it uses, and you can create multiple masks here. So you can create. Uh, different masks for for different areas uh, and so it's pretty sophisticated it works kind of in place of layers and kind of like layers um, you can also just get rid of that right there uh, that's another thing to bring up real quick is the retouch tool it, it used to be called the repair tool they've improved it and uh, the interesting thing about this tool is say we want to do some patching to the sky here and so we can get rid of that little cloud here but we can actually take this and move it around and uh, tell it or to repair or you can even clone things so there's a repair and the clone the main difference between those repair takes the area 
that you select and bases the repair in the area you selected to repair on it, the clone just copies it directly. So, so it it uh, it's just a direct copy as opposed to basing just the repair on it. And so you can see right here, I've moved this down and it's it's taken this texture and everything and it's tried to make it more like the sky. It's made it more uh, blue-like. Uh, but if we go down to clone, you'll see that it turns totally green because it's just copying it directly. So that's the main difference between that. So the repair actually tries to blend it more and the clone's just a direct copy. Uh, so we'll reset that. And then the final uh, section is we have some effects here that we can use as well on this. So as far as the new features go, there are a bunch of new features. One of them is the, the improved noise uh, uh, reduction. And uh, there's uh, also some uh, soft proofing in it uh, that's supposed to help you with printing. There's also the clone and the repair is new. And then we have uh, some improvements to the uh, photographic uh, indexing and in, in, in replacement, including color labels, more metadata, and uh, improved project organization. So that's an overview and a review of the program. I think it works really good. The thing to remember, though, is uh, it doesn't it won't totally replace something like Photoshop if you're using kind of advanced layer systems, but it will do probably 80, 90 percent of of uh, most edits that most people would do, or it would probably do closer to 100 percent of what most people would do. But it will probably do probably 80 or 90 percent of totally what you could do with different editing if you were going into montages in the more advanced type of things. I'm Dean and this has been Photo Blue and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share and like.